Hello, and welcome to CMMI Tech Talk. In this video, we are going to look at the Service Delivery Management, the SDM practice area, one of four practice areas in the services domain. We will discuss the intent of this practice area and look at what value it can provide to an organization and look at the individual practices to see how they can be used to improve an organization's approach to delivering services to its customers. SDM falls within the Delivering and Managing Services Capability area in the Doing category. Our tour starts with looking at the key mandatory model components, the high-level intent and value statements. Intent delivers services and manages the service delivery system. Value increases customer satisfaction by delivering services that meet or exceed customer expectations. As the intent statement shows, this practice area is concerned with the actual services that organizations may deliver to their customers and, perhaps more importantly, with the service delivery system through which these services are realized. It is worth pausing here to consider what a service system means. According to the CMMI glossary, a service system is an integrated and interdependent combination of components that satisfies stakeholder requirements. And a service system component is a process, work product, person, consumable, customer, or other resource required for a service system to deliver value. Service system components can include components owned by the customer or a third party. This is an important point that we need to be aware of when discussing the practices of SDM. Service systems consist of various items such as people, processes, and tools, all of which collectively combine to enable organizations to deliver their services to their customers. A service system is not just a collection of IT infrastructure. Additional complexity must be considered as organizations try to manage the combination of a potentially very diverse set of component parts. The practices of SDM are split across the first three practice group levels and exhibit the characteristic evolutionary progression toward increasing capability. A single level one practice provides a fundamental directive to deliver services using a service system. At level two, the SDM practices introduce a more structured approach to service delivery by establishing service agreements and using these as the basis for both delivering and managing services. Finally, level three refines the level two approach by defining organizational standards for managing service systems and service agreements. Now let us look at the individual practices within the SDM practice area. We often think of the level one practices as the basics when looking at a practice area, which is the case with service delivery management. SDM 1.1 calls for organizations to deliver services using their service system in whatever form that may be. If you take a closer look at the practice details, there is a little additional detail to steer you here. For level one, the model wants to see the delivering services using whatever system they have available to them. Most SDM content is in the level two practices, where six practices are identified and provide substantially more detail. SDM 2.1 introduces the key concept of a service agreement. As the name suggests, a service agreement is a documented arrangement between the customer and the service supplier regarding the nature of the services to be delivered. The exact content of such agreements will vary depending upon the needs of both parties to the agreement, but typically it would include some description of the service provided, terms and conditions, costing and service levels, and other necessary information to ensure both parties agree on what services should be delivered. By recording this detail in an agreement, both parties protect their interests. The customer cannot expect to receive services that are beyond the agreement's scope, and the supplier must ensure that they deliver what they have signed up for. Service agreements are typically a substantial part of any formal contractual or commercial agreement between supplier and customer, but they can also take a much simpler form. The key here is that an agreement is established in an acceptable form to all parties. 
As we shall shortly see, this service agreement feeds into most of the other practices in service delivery management. SDM 2.2 looks for organizations to receive and process service requests in accordance with service agreements. This practice builds upon the level one practice in two very important ways. First, whereas SDM 1.1 looks for organizations to deliver services, this practice introduces the idea of a service request. Although this may seem obvious, it reinforces the transactional nature of service delivery, which is key to ensuring a mutually beneficial relationship between supplier and customer. To receive a service from the organization, the customer must first request it. Even at level one, a service is likely to be delivered in response to a specific request rather than ad hoc when the supplier deems it appropriate. The idea of a formal trigger for service delivery is important, especially when we look at the second part of this practice, which states that we should receive and process service requests in accordance with the service agreement. Now we begin to see the value of the service agreement. The service agreement will identify how service requests are to be submitted. This will define the mechanisms by which a request can be made, for example, online, over the phone, or email. What information is required to fulfill the service request? Who is empowered to submit requests? And any other information needed to process a request and receive the service. Different types of service may be managed in different ways. So for example, a password reset request is usually submitted by end users as needed, whereas a routine software update might be initiated directly by the service provider as part of a maintenance agreement. Once a service request has been logged within the service system, we can also track progress against the request to ensure that it is being progressed in a timely manner per the service levels outlined in the service agreement. SDM 2.3 builds on the previous practice. It is not sufficient to log and process service requests. The services being requested need to be delivered once requested. Again, the service agreement plays a crucial role here as it will outline the steps that a request will go through from its initial submission to the point at which it can be closed because the service has been provided in accordance with the service agreement. Information relating to the delivery of services captured, not just at the point of request, but throughout the service delivery lifecycle can be extremely helpful in tuning the service system and adjusting it to ensure that it is delivering in accordance with the service agreement. This information can then feed into SDM 2.4, in which the existing service agreements and the performance data achieved through the delivery of services are used to prepare for updated or new agreements. This practice is interested in all salient information we can derive from our service system. This might include customer complaints, system outages, and service request data. For existing service agreements, historical data can be extremely useful. It will help identify which services are struggling to meet their agreed service levels or are being under-requested. This can help both parties fine tune that service agreement to ensure that it delivers exactly what the customer needs. Historical data can also be very helpful when creating estimates to bid for new work with newer existing customers or extending an existing agreement to provide additional or modified services. Most service delivery organizations operate in a dynamic space, and it is vitally important to improve, update, and adjust the service system to keep it working optimally. Part of any service system is the service approach, or operating procedures that govern how service components interact to successfully deliver customer services. SDM 2.5 looks for this approach to be adjusted as necessary to ensure that the service system is maintained and managed effectively. The last level two practice is closely related to the previous one. SDM 2.6 calls for organizations to confirm the service system is ready to support service delivery. This is a continuous process, not just restricted to the initial setup of the service system. Every time the service system is modified, Organizations need to ensure that the changes will not adversely impact the current service delivery. 
This may include providing service support staff with additional training to help them respond to service requests and confirming changes to the service system infrastructure were implemented correctly. A comprehensive service delivery approach may call for rollback procedures to be available when a change causes an unexpected failure and it is necessary to revert to the previous working version of the service system. Service delivery management has a single level three practice SDM 3.1, which looks for organizations to develop, record, and keep updated organizational standard service systems and agreements. There is considerable benefit to standardizing our service offerings as much as possible. All customers have slightly different requirements, but how organizations deliver services can usually be standardized to a great extent. This enables an organization to benefit from reduced costs and greater scalability to take on extra work. Although there are certain situations where it may be necessary to provide a largely independent service system for certain customers, uh, for example, due to specific security constraints in most situations, operating multiple systems for multiple clients is less efficient than having a standard approach and tailoring it to meet the needs of multiple customers. The topic of standard services is covered in more detail in the Strategic Service Management Practice Area, the STSM. There is a separate tech talk on this practice area that will cover this more in depth. In summary, SDM covers establishing and operating service systems, putting in place maintaining and standardizing service agreements, putting in place a service request mechanism, recording service delivery data and using it to inform new or modified service agreements, standardizing service delivery approaches to improve scalability and reduce costs. Thank you for joining us for this CMMI Tech Talk. If you have questions, please contact us at support.isaka.org.